well the first ingredient is water so this is watered down salvia hispanica xanthan gum acid uh, i'm not using this the style and beauty doctor here on youtube and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to read an ingredient list because a lot of y'all out here got it twisted for consumers it can tell us a couple of things it can also not tell us a lot of things which we'll get into in this video ingredients are listed in descending order according to weight up to the one percent mark now that can vary from country to country but in the grand old us of a that ingredient list is going to be in descending order according to weight now at the one percent mark brands can list things in whichever order they like and that is totally legal now what can you actually tell from a product ingredient list well one if there are certain ingredients that you're looking to avoid being able to quickly decipher if that ingredient is in the product that is something that you can get from the ingredient list of course then if you were looking for certain ingredients to actually be in a product you can also glance at the ingredient list and decipher that as well now another thing you can potentially maybe gauge if a product is going to perform as it is advertised on the front or through some other advertising claims by taking a look at the ingredient ingredients on the back. For instance, if a product is going to claim that you're going to have smoother, brighter skin, but you look at the ingredient list and there's nothing back there that's going to get you smoother, brighter skin. <laughs> so those are a couple of things that you might be able to tell from a product ingredient list. But there's a lot of things that you will not be able to tell from a product ingredient list. And to talk about that, I brought on cosmetic chemist and formulator Esther Olu to talk to us about ingredient list you guys had some questions and turns out a lot of people are getting it twisted when it comes to reading an ingredient list so let's get into our chat can an ingredient list really tell you how well a product is going to work no unfortunately i mean if that was the case i would be picking and choosing like very like way better unfortunately it doesn't tell you how well the product is gonna work you just really have to just try it and just see how it's gonna work for you it's super complex how just like product chemistry it depends on the entire formula similar to like a cake um you don't know where the people are getting the ingredients from are they getting it from like a like a bad cheap supplier or are they getting it from like a high quality like supplier what part of the world are they getting it from that's that can affect like are, are they getting the, the, the materials during a good season for a bad season. How much are the materials? Um, that can affect the quality of a material. How pure is the material? Are they using any special equipment? All of that should be taken into account when we think about the finalized product. I did want to go over a couple of common misconceptions about ingredient lists that I think would be helpful for people to know. So one of the top common misconceptions that I hear, and I even saw it in some of the questions, was that if water is listed at the first as the first ingredient, then that means that the product is watered down. No, we. Well, I mean, I mean, sorry, I don't mean to sound like aggressive, but like, no, that is definitely not the case. Water is the most commonly used ingredient in when it comes to skincare because without water, none of the other ingredients. Well, I mean, some of the other ingredients, excuse me, even like your actives will not even be able to be in the formula. Like we need water to solubilize some of the ingredients that like you need, like niacinamide, for example. Uh, tranexamic acid, for example, um, without water, those ingredients would not be able to be in the finalized product as well. Water in, in cosmetics, like when it comes to cosmetic chemistry, it's the universal solvent for us. That's what helps us get things into solution. So it absolutely does not dilute <laughs> your formula. You need it to create the formula. Another misconception that I think people talk about with ingredients is that if the actives are at the bottom of the list, the product is trash. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be saying no throughout this whole entire day. But no, that's, that's also not true as well. Sometimes with some suppliers that we um, that we work with, they'll give us ingredients in either complexes. And when I say complexes, I mean like a combination of ingredients, including like the active ingredient. They'll give us a percentage that we can use, like a range that we can use that ingredient in. Sometimes it can range from anywhere between like 0.1% to like, let's say 5%. And this is like where they do clinical testing through these ranges to see if the ranges have efficacy. Some Sometimes it can work at 0.1%, which is obviously less than 1%. And sometimes it can be 5%. We have a data that shows that the ingredients work at this concentration, even if it is less than 1%. So it's like, just 
because something is at a higher concentration doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Because for some people, when you get that higher percentage, it might work okay for some people, but then for some people, it may not be such a great experience. What are some resources that you think that uh, consumers can look at that they do need to look up ingredients? I think Inky Decorder is a good, great website because it gives you a short summary of like what the ingredient does. It's not like giving you like, all the scientific data because I mean, a lot of consumers don't necessarily know how to interpret like, that data. But if people are really curious about like the toxicology and like safety and whatnot, one of my favorite websites is um, Cosmetic Ingredient Review. And it's a website that not only has like a short description of like what an ingredient is, but it also goes through carcinogenicity of ingredients, any toxicology, what concentrations that these ingredients have been used through it, like tons of personal care products. There's another one called the SCCS that also talks about the safety of cosmetic ingredients too. So if people want to get into like the real, like the real, like robust scientific safety and data, that's a great web website as well. <laughs> the EWG, because a lot of people quote the EWG. <laughs> I think what's very dangerous about the environmental working group and for people watching who aren't quite sure, if I were to summarize it, I would say like, this is like a council of like Gwyneth Paltrow's. I'm like, what is their angle? I feel like they kind of serve to confuse consumers about ingredients that they claim as unclean or unsafe in order to then market and sell products that, you know, quote unquote clean. Now, well, what I also think is dangerous about EWG is that when you search for an ingredient, their web, they have some great SEO. So their website usually comes up as maybe First. one or second in yeah. the search. Well, I think they're trash. I mean, I'm not going to cuss right now, but <laughs> if I were to cuss, just know that I'm using, using like the scale, like that one to 10 scale, like the red and the green, um, and saying like these ingredients are bad and these, these are like, okay. It gives consumers fuel for cons conspiracy thinking. It doesn't get people to critically think about what what is really going on in their skincare products so you mentioned the scientific um studies so they actually do they do link some references but they heavily misinterpret them they don't think that we as consumers are actually going to look at it you know we're going to like look at it to see what, what they're saying because not everybody knows how to read a scientific article you know what i'm saying so they'll, they'll just say whatever they want and people are going to believe it because, oh, okay, they have this scale which is made up by the way but don't get me started on that i i agree with you i think clean beauty is is a little BS um, and racist and classist and yeah. you know, like a lot of things, right? Yeah. Once you tell people there's no whatever in a product, they're like, oh my God, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't use that. About like the, the no-no list, I think like what's really funny is that like when, when brands use it, like let's say we're talking about foundation, some of the stuff that they're saying it doesn't have, like let's say like sodium lauryl sulfate, no one's gonna put that in the foundation. Like that's that's supposed to be for a cleanser. So a person asked, are there other names for fragrance listed in the ingredients? Okay, so this is like a, it's like a, kind of like a yes and no. Um, it really depends because for example, some oils, like some plant oils, um, for example, sea buckthorn oil smells naturally fragrant, but it's not technically fragrance because it's a plant oil. So ultimately it depends on what are they using in, in the formula. Like if I'm using a fragrant plant oil, it's not going to say fragrance on the ingredient list. There are some suppliers that um, will, will, will release like essences and the, and the ingredient list will be called an extract. It will not be called fragrance. And sometimes you'll see natural fragrance, but it's still like a still technically fragrant. Also like another way to tell too is on some products they'll put no added fragrance. And that's a, that's a way to tell that like your product may possibly have a scent to it. So no added fragrance means I'm not intentionally adding fragrance on top of like whatever's in that formula. But it could also mean that there's something else in the formula that's giving a natural fragrance to it. And another way to tell is if you see fragrance allergens on the ingredient list. So like limonene, linalool, for example, benzoyl alcohol, those are like ways to see if there may possibly be a scent without actually having to try the product on your skin as well. Are there certain preservatives that are better than others? Uh, especially if the product is in a jar that you can scoop out with your fingers or the product is subjected to different conditions. For example, a cleanser that you leave in the shower. In, in my opinion, what I consider a good preservative is a preservative that has broad spectrum activity 
And what that means is that it's able to fight against bacteria, yeast, mold, several different classes of uh, microorganisms compared to like, let's, let's just say like one category. And that's what I consider a good preservative. You, you Typically, you're, you're never going to really see nowadays any companies that only use one preservative. It's always going to be like typically like a mixture and that combination is going to be able to fight against the different categories of uh, microorganisms. Overall, it depends um, on what kind of preser preservatives that they're using. It depends on what the consumer is doing. Like for example, are you not washing your hands before you do your skincare routine? Okay, <laughs> so that's one. Are you guys adding, diluting your products? Like, are you adding like dirty water to your products to like dilute it? That's going to affect um, the efficacy of your entire product. The reason like why brands do like preservative testing is to, to like kind of like, it's like a simu simulation to see if anything, like any water or any like you dipping your finger to the jar or any of those um, scenarios, if that happens, that the preservative system is going to be able to protect against it. Paraben. Let's own paraben. I personally think that they're fine. Um, I'm not saying this because like I, I work in the industry or it has something to do with that. I personally, like I look, look, look at the data myself. Like I've been trained to look at scientific research and see like the flaws in it. That study um, in particular that like caused that damage, it's extremely flawed. And like what's, what's funny about it is that people still use it as like a source, but the author of it retracted the paper. I mean, it's still public information, but they took what they said back. They even like, made a statement saying like, Hair bins have are not concluded to be dangerous. So it's kind of just like, where are you guys? Where are y'all hearing this from? Like, you know what I'm saying? The EWG played a huge role into how how controversial uh, parabens became. That's like one of the, I think the first ingredients that they um, spread a lot of fear about. Someone did ask, what determines the potency of a serum? How do you know if it's truly high quality or just filled with unnecessary filler? That actually can't be determined from like looking at an ingredient list. The only people that would know how potent a formula is, is the people that are, that's like working in the lab to see like the concentrations of what what's being put in a formula. There's a, there's a misconception when it comes to like skincare, skin permeation and when it comes to like active ingredients and stuff, it's super complex. In a formula, you need to have the right delivery system to get those ingredients to where you need it to go. And some formulas don't always contain those ingredients. So even if a formula is potent, let, let, let's just say it is, doesn't mean you're going to get all of those benefits all the time. That's like why people always emphasize that skincare is trial and error, because at the end of the day, it really is. Some, some, even some potent ingredients or potent formulas that people are saying is, is potent may not do anything for your skin. Concentration is part of the complexity of a, of a formula. You have to think about what other ingredients are in it. What's the pH, for example, all of that determines the potency of a formula and if it's getting delivered to your skin. I think that people feel that certain products should just be the active ingredient and maybe one or two other things. Like they'll look at the other, like the emollients and the the thickeners and the all the other stuff. And like, oh, this is just fluff. We don't even need that. I think that that's like a reason like why I don't like the word fillers. Another way to think about it is like functional ingredients. Let's say, for example, tretinoin. People know that they experience like flakiness. Their skin, their skin gets dry. If y'all just apply just like the the tretinoin without those ingredients, I'm pretty sure y'all will be like crying that like your skin's stinging. And like, you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like. You need like those emollients, those lubricants, those thickeners to mitigate like those side effects. They're not unnecessary. They're very, very necessary to make the finished product. Listen, ain't nobody trying to look like Boo Boo the Fool out here when it comes to these skincare products, right? But while it may require an advanced understanding of chemistry and science in order to really understand what some of the things that we talked about in this video mean, that doesn't mean that you're unable to arm yourself with at least some basic knowledge of what goes into your skincare. I highly suggest that you go to reputable websites. We talked about Inky Decoder. Esther also mentioned another site, which I will link in the description box so you can check out. Thanks again to Esther, again, for taking the time and being on this channel. She's been on this channel a couple of times. We talked about, you know, why mineral sunscreens are so <laughs> why they the way they are. And we talked about some other additional topics here on this channel. So I will link those videos below. Make sure you check them out. Anyway, if you have additional questions about skincare ingredient list, please leave them in the comments because this might spark a part two 
or future video. So definitely leave your questions in the comment section. Also, while you are down there, scroll a little bit up closer, make sure you like this video and subscribe, turn on your notifications so you don't miss a thing. And I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.